You may be seated. We greet you all that have joined us on the live broadcast on this Khatve Imams. I do want to take my time for a specific teaching. And I do want every element of this teaching to be precise with the scripture, the khatu that I will use. It is vitally important. But of all things that we get understanding, we can hear things, but yet we do not perceive what we hear. There's a word that the Torah uses. It is called tabun, tabun. It is an exceptional, excellent personification of wisdom. It is when a mind has the skillfulness, the wisdom, the understanding, the shrewdness to operate within the confines of the instructions of Omar Yam. And once one began to operate like that, then they began to teach, to learn, to teach, to instruct from a tremendous base of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. They have a plethora of wisdom because they're wise in the counsel of Yah. They have studied out the Torah and the wisdom of the Torah, and they have operated according to that wisdom of the Torah. And so what Yah does, even as he acknowledged the assembly, the elect, the call out, those that are gathered in Yahshua's name, he identifies us as an Ishaw. And in Ishaw, she has innate characteristics that are so beautiful, there's nothing like it upon the face of the earth. Now, we understand how Hashotan has done all he can to destroy the excellence and the beauty of that. And Yah knows that even the young Achot uh, or the young Ishaw, they must be nurtured and taught and brought up by the power of this taboon, it is a skillful wisdom. It is a wisdom and knowledge that uh, goes beyond even our ability to comprehend and understand. It is a mind that has been de developed by the Torah. It is a mind that has, uh, has, has shown forth the example of the excellent living uh, and the excellent desire to walk in obedience uh, unto the Torah of Omar Yah. We must understand that Hashatan, in his first assault, it was against the mind of the Ishwal. So it is in this hour, he is trying to assault the assembly of Omar Ayyam. And that is why as we maturate, simply mature, grow older, he identifies whether you are a man or a woman as a Zachin, one that is elderly, one that has the season of wisdom and understanding. One has matured through all of the opposition and the great battles that one has been engaged in in life. And they speak from a knowledge of skillfulness. They speak from a persona of wisdom that is not like one that is young and unseasoned in the Torah of Yah. I was thinking today, it reminded me as uh, the barber shop in the community of the people of the diaspora. Regardless to whether you were going to get a haircut or not, uh, you would go to the barber shop because there was always a very candid debate. There was always this skillfulness uh, when one would debate the issues. Uh, and even though you had no knowledge of the matter, you could learn from them. And especially when you watch the elders and the old ones uh, as they would debate and as they would utilize their strengths that they knew they had uh, against their opposition uh, to gain uh, a position of power or authority. Now that is what wisdom is. It gives the young uh, hot uh, this wisdom of authority uh, that they are not succumbed to the world. They are not given over uh, unto the lasciviousness uh, and the concupiscence of the world. Things that are evil, seductive, that draw their minds away from all Maria. It is on the same thing as a man or a woman. Uh, he grants unto us elders or zakhin, those that are wise those that know how to scrutinize, those that have had experiences in life uh, that are the greatest teachers that one could ever have. And so he grants unto us this, you that are elders at Zachin, he grants this taboon, this wisdom that is so excellent, you, you, want, you don't want to hold it back. If we have something that is that excellent, you don't want to hold that back. 
If you have something that is that beautiful, uh, it's not that you want to sell it, but you want to share that with everyone. And that is what the wisdom of that mind speaks, as it sees and understands, because it is a skillful mind. It is a mind that understands battles. It is a mind that understands the very uh, tremendous onslaught or the enemy as it approaches and its deceptive mannerism uh, or the ways of the enemy. They are easily uh, understood, Yisra'ya. And Yah grants unto us uh, in the midst of Yisra'ya, He grants unto us the Zachin. Not only the uh, Ish, but the Ishor, the Zachin. And we all have responsibilities unto Yah, and we must carry them out uh, with a great sense of delight that Yah has granted me this hour and this time uh, to speak of His excellence, not only in, my, in the verbal uh, way, but also in the actual. That you see my visit, you see what I am. You know me because of my character, because my, my characteristics are based upon the principles of the Torah. And when Yah began to bless you with this tremendous pluffery of wealth, of wisdom and understanding, you cannot hold that with it. It is either we have it or we don't. It is either that we love Yah or we really don't love Him. And that's what I'm going to teach on tonight. It is not an assault upon the, the Ishar, but there are times that we miss the most important and the most valuable thing uh, and the responsibilities that he commands unto us. The bath must be taught. They must be taught. It is one thing, there is nothing more precious and more valuable than a wife, than an Ishar. She is the most prized thing. Her price is far above rubies. Do you understand? She is the epitome of what Yah is. And Yah says that her ish, her husband, his heart does safely trust Bontach in her all the days of his life because she would do him no evil. She would do him no rach. She would do him no evil deeds all of his life. And so his heart trusts in her. His heart literally Bontach, who can find a chayil, a virtuous woman that is skilled. You cannot become skillful without being taught. You're not a mighty warrior or a soldier unless you're taught. When I went into the military during that time, they were still preparing for the war in Vietnam. So we had no skills as how to fight in those kinds of conditions. So they taught us. Who taught us? Men that were skilled, that had, had tours in Vietnam, understood death and the perils of those actions. So they began to teach us. Those were the men that taught us. There were not men that taught us that had not been or had not experienced Vietnam. There were men that had experienced the war, had experienced life and death, and their teaching ability, it was seasoned with an understanding of war beyond a chart or grass. It was an actual thing. And so when you find a true issue, a high-yield woman, she has an experience like no other. And she has a tremendous riches that she shares with great delight. And she is always like our ancestors how they will pull the young daughters to the side and talk to them and tell them whether they knew Yah or they did not know Yah. They will pull them under their bosom and say, baby, let me show you something. Baby, let me tell you this. I would see that as a young lad. I watched that. It was not based upon their purity or right. They taught them what is value, valuable and the elements of, uh, of the responsibility that they should take upon. And that is important, Yisra'ya. I want to teach you tonight, beginning here in the book of Titus, the book of Titus. And beginning here at chapter 2 and verse 1, it is vitally important that I teach this. Because we all must stand in judgment before Almighty Yah. We must understand. And the birth of Tizayon, they have a responsibility that is tremendously grave. It is a responsibility that, is, that Yah has granted unto them because he sends the value in the high yield, the bath of great strength and beauty. 
And her beauty is not tending to the external things. It is tending to those things of the Torah that shapes, molds her into the fashion of what Yah commands her to walk in. She is the epitome and the representation of the assembly of Yisra'ah. Because she represents the meekness, the kindness, the love, the gentleness, the care, and all of those things. If a woman is an excellent wife to her husband, why would she not teach the young bath of Tizayon? It is not that the men will get off. I will deal with them on the next teaching on this matter, all right? If she, if she possessed the essentials and the beauty of that, why not teach the other ones that beauty? If you get dressed up, don't you want others to look at you when you get dressed up? Be honest with me. You don't dress up for, uh, although you have your husband, your wife, you want others to see the excellence of your beauty, don't you? So if we possess that which is excellent and beautiful, then you don't take that and hide that. You share it, Yisra'ah. Ja'u writes unto Titus, he writes in an excellent care, Concern for Yisra'ah, the remnant scattered abroad. He says in the book of Titus, chapter 2, I want to begin reading at verse 1. He says, I want you to speak, but speak you the things which become, I want the things that you speak, I want them to become lecha, sound, excellent doctrine, they are instructions that are so profound and so persuasive. That is what a doctrine or a lecha is. It is a teaching and an instruction that is sound, based upon sound principles, solid principles, that is persuasive. It overtakes you and you understand the riches of that, although you don't have understanding of that doctrine. It gives you tremendous insight. So he instructs this man messenger to teach those things that gives revelation and insight on to Yisra'ah, not only the Ish, but the Isha as well. He says, uh, I want you to tabun or teach lomat. He said, I want you to teach the zakhin, the elderly, the older men. I want them to understand what it is, Yisraya, to be sober, that their minds operate in the sense and the balance of the Torah. And I will get into the depth of that, all right? He says, I want you to teach the elderly men to be sober. I want them to be grave, not folly and frivolity and sporting. I want them to have the sense of urgency of time because they are the pillars and the examples and those of their birth that sees them, then they will operate in that same kind of ruaka. It is not just our words, but we must be the example of what our words are, Yisra'ya. You cannot say something and yet you do not operate in that same spirit. It is a hypocrite. As the old proverbs, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. If it's good for is if it's excellent for one, it's excellent for the whole the whole kabura, Yisraya. He says that you teach all men to be sober, grave, temperate. He said they must be sound, they must be solid in imuna, and also in achava, and above all, they must be sound in the orech, the patience, the ability to endure, the ability to suffer. The ability not to murmur and complain and open the doors to all kinds of strange spirits that will overpower those that are not of the strength that you may be of Yisra'ya. He said in that process as well, he doesn't leave off the zakhin. He says in verse 3, he says, I want you to tabun, to teach by the distraction, the wisdom this personification of excellent wisdom, uh, what Yah has granted unto you, uh, he said, teach the older women likewise, the Ishal, those that are Zakim, not foolish, uh, but teach them likewise to be of the same nature, the same Ruach, uh, the same characteristics. Uh, they must be of that same nature. Why? That they be in behavior as becoming set apart. As those that have set their lives apart for Yah, to serve Yah, 
to walk in the presence of Yahshua HaMashiach. Not trying to emulate the world, but they're shaped by the disciplines of the Torah of Yah. And it always began with the man. Because he is the strength of Yisra'ah, and she is the personification of that strength, Yisra'ah. So if the man is walking in that excellence of that power of Yah, then that tends uh, to, to fulfill itself uh, in his own home. If you find a weak man, you're going to find a woman the same way. If you find a man that's strong, uh, you're going to find a woman that's strong. Uh, if you find a foolish man, you're going to find a foolish wife. If you find a deceived man, you will find a deceived wife. That's the general rule of thumb. But he says, also teach the zakhain, the elderly women, why? Because they are in charge with such great jewels. When a man finds an, uh, an isha, a chayil woman, uh, her price is far above rubies. There is no value to her. And the enemy tries to rob that beauty from Beth Tizayon every day. Trying to press her to emulate the world and to be like the world. There is no beauty in the world. But when a man finds a Hayel woman, we must understand the very beauty of a Hayel woman. We must understand what are the ingredients of her mind to give her that pinnacle that Yah identifies her that way. That Yah places the value upon her. What are the rubies of Yah like? What are they like? The world says diamonds are a girl's best friend. And Yah says that a Hayel woman, her price is far above the rubies. They're greater than rubies. Her price, her, her price is so excellent. Why? Because there have been things imparted into her by women of taboon. Women uh, that, that, that are wise. Women that, uh, that possess the wisdom of Yah. Women uh, that, that understand the finite details of things. It is amazing that we can understand the finite details of things that are so trivial and folly, can't we? Gossip and mess. When it comes to Yah, we just don't understand anything, yeah. Israel. Yah. We don't understand the beauty of Yah. Because our hearts are not in love with Him. And if our hearts are not in love with Him, then we're not going to teach about Him. Whatever our heart loves or our love, that's what we're going to teach. If we love folly, we're going to act that way with our daughters and those among Yisra'ya. And the Zorkin, her daughters, consists of all of those uh, that have been birthed out of the womb uh, and that are walking according to the Torah of Yah. Those are her daughters. So if she loves foolishness, that's the way she's going to act. She loves laughter and sporting. Those are the things she's going to talk about. If she loves Yah, she's going to talk about it. Yah. Yah will be the constant on her mind and the constant of her loshon, her tongue, her language will speak of him. Moving quickly. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The older women be likewise and set apartness. He says, not false or shecha, deceiver, sotan. That is what an accuser is. It is so, not sha, but so, S-A-W hyphen T-A-N, shotan. She cannot be a false accuser. She cannot speak shekha, lies, to defraud, to deceive. She cannot do that, Yisraya. I think often of my, even my natural mother, although there was no relationship in the sense that uh, she did not do my issue wrong, uh, but when there were things to be taught as a woman that had experienced the world, uh, she was more than willing to do that. She would always take time to do things like that. She would teach her. She thought that she had something that would impress her. She taught her how to bake cakes uh, and all of those kinds of things. And so that is what uh, the, the motherly or the shepherding spirit of the daughter is. Uh, that is what it does. And it must do that. Today's mothers are teaching their daughters uh, to walk in every kind of delusion of horam uh, and every kind of unclean thing. And it's not of Yah. They don't teach them with this taboon. Because they don't have personified wisdom. They love folly. They love trivial things. But they don't love those things. Teach them. Uh, or the elderly. Don't be false accusers. Don't speak folly. Don't accuse. Don't speak sheka. Don't be shultan. He said, first of all, they should not be false accusers. 
If one, if there is something of a nature that will create dissension, you get the individual. If one comes to you with an oath or a short taunt against one, you get both of them, and then you, uh, you rectify the matter in the presence of both. But that's not how we do things. So Yah says to the young, to the, to the Zohain, to the elders, this is what you must do. This is what, it, it, same thing with the man. He cannot be a false accuser. But this is specifically to the Bath of Zion. Not uh, a false accuser, not given too much yeah, yeah, not given too much wine, uh, but he says teachers. Now this is what I want to get into the depth somewhat tonight. He says teachers or yara, teachers, uh, yara, teachers. And in this instant, yara is it has the indications of that which flows like a river. That is what Yara. The old ones of our heritage, you will find them, they can talk and teach all day long. I used to love sitting down with my Isha grandfather, although he didn't know Yah. But he could tell the stories of his time that was so interesting to me. And I could listen to that man talk literally for hours. And he would tell other stories. And the stories that he would tell, they would be so refined in detail. And when he would tell me the story again, it was precisely like the first, the second, the third. It was always the same. Nothing ever altered in that story. And I will love sitting down with him, and he just talk. And that is what Yara is. It is like a river that flows. There's a flowing all the time from that teacher. They should be teachers. It should flow from them. There should be a Yara. You cannot segregate yourself. Uh, you cannot, uh, uh, you cannot uh, resort to your little cocoon uh, or your little hiding place. That's not Yah. Yeah. He says you must Yara. You must uh, allow the wisdom to flow like a well, uh, a stream uh, of water that constantly flows. Uh, Why? Because a stream that constantly flows, uh, there's always fresh water. Water. It is not stagnant. It does not give time for inborn diseases to collect themselves and to create a poison in the water. And so when what is constantly their minds are, are refresh uh, and delighting in the testimonies of God, there's a constant flow of Torah from their bosom. Not folly. Not things that are unwise. But the things that are wise, he says, you must be daughters, Beth is Iona. You must be teachers of tav daba, things that are pleasing, tav things. You must be teachers of that. That is what the zakhain, the elderly women, the elderly men, they must be teachers of things that are excellent and beautiful, the things that are pleasant to Yah, the things that please the heart of Yah, the things that please the very mind of Almighty Yahweh. We must be teachers of those kinds of things. And I want to point out some things. I'm going to continue and finish this course tonight. Hallelujah. I want to show us some of the first, this is one of the first things that we must teach the bath of Tizayon in Yeremiah chapter 5 verse 25. When they do not understand why there are certain things that are, are persistent in their lives uh, and things that are happening unto them, it's one thing that we must understand. Jeremiah, Jeremiah 5, 25, uh, Yah speaks to us as a nation. We are the woman. We are, we are the bride of Almighty Yah and Yahshua. That's who we are. And he says here unto Yisrael, what has withheld uh, the very beauty of Yah and the presence here of Yah? He says, you're of all your iniquity. When we are twisted and perverted, we do twisted things. Our mouths are filled with deceit and the, and the spirit of shaitan of accusing. It is a perverted mind. Yah says, it is your oven have turned away these things, the excellent things of Yah. 
It is the sin. It is the wickedness. Uh, it is what our minds practice. We allow our minds to practice uh, that have turned away the things or the blessings, uh, the berakaya, the riches of Almighty Yah. Not just riches, but his esha. Those things that we delight in, whatever he grants unto us, uh, we are happy. We are, we are aesthetic. We are at Shalom uh, with Almighty Yah. So it is our own. It is our iniquity. It is our sheker, our lying and deceit, our defrauding. Uh, we say one thing. Uh, uh, my actions to, and let me show an example. We say one thing and we do something differently. We say that, uh, we say that, oh, I love my, uh, I love my hot. Uh, and then out of the earshot of the individual, then to this hot, this uh, we speak something that's different. And then when they see us and we embrace, oh, I love my Akhaoyo, and yet they sense that that's not right. Even children understand that. So even in our days, our forefathers were very careful what things they said in the eyeshot of children. There are those that are not strong in the, in the Torah of Yah. You don't devastate one by teaching them things uh, that are of own, that are perverted and twisted from a twisted mind. You don't do a daughter like that. You teach her the tall things. For if you teach her those things, it will, will hold the things from their marriage, her love for her husband, for her desire and her passion for Almighty Yah. You don't do that, Yisrael Yah. Yah said, it is your own, your sin, your wickedness, your perverted, twisted mind that have turned away these things. He said, and your hata, your sin, your willing practice of defying Yah, have withholden, has mana, you have been denied, it shall not come, it, there is a restraint, it is hindered. He said, it have withholden tough things from you. So you must teach them the beauty of obedience and love to be chaste, uh, to be sober, to be temperate. Because if not, then uh, it will be their own hata, uh, their sin, their willingness uh, to defy. Wife, obey your husband in all things. Husband, love your wife. That's what Yah commands. And if you, if you teach them things that are corrupt and twist their minds, uh, then you, my Ahot, uh, will withhold the excellent things uh, from that daughter's bosom uh, that she will not develop properly. Because your experience has not been what you expected, you don't teach them out of a twisted, convoluted, perverted mind. Uh, you still teach them the beauty of what Torah says about it. Uh, that's how you do it. You don't teach them by, by crying out and murmuring, complaining, uh, and crying out to Hashatan, drawing demons of hell uh, to dilute your daughter, your son, your daughter-in-law, or those that have no wisdom like you. You don't do that. It's wrong. It's wrong. And you, we're going to pay, all of us. We're going to pay whether you buy it or not. So that is what withhold the things from Yisrael. That's what withhold things from, from a marriage. You don't want your prayers to be hindered, Isha or Isha. That's why you obey, and that's why, man, you love your wife. You don't want that to be hindered, Yisrael. You must be guided by teaching them tough things. You must teach them the things that are excellent. When Yah finished making all things, he looked and he saw that it was what? Tough, wasn't it? Did he make marriage? It is tough. It is a beautiful thing. And for you to speak against that with a vile nature because of what things you have wrestled with, because you are not taught the proper protocol, then you can teach them out of your experience of the hardship and the great agony you have suffered and what you have done, not just him, what you have done to bring about a strength and a beauty in her. Yeah. That's what you do. If you have something that's beautiful, you want everyone to have it. I know I would. Well, Yah shows me things. I was sitting there today and I began to read. I, I saw, I, let me move. I, I saw how that America is in the Strait of Hamuz. And I, I immediately went to the Torah there in the, in the, in the book of Revelation, Gilgana, where, where the, the fourth trumpet was sound, when the fourth seal was opened by the hands of Yahshua. And he that rides upon a white horse, I may teach that on the Shabbat. It's a very powerful message. And one of the most proclamations was, see that thou a penny, see that thou hurt not the oil or the wine. Now, I understand that in the reference of the spiritual sense, but it has indication also in the natural, right? So if it's God's will, if I get a chance to really dig into the depth of that, I'll teach it back to this now, all right? 
So you teach them the things that will not hold the tough things from them. You teach them out of this taboon, this personified wisdom you have. You've walked with Yah for years, so you should have a wisdom. You should have a wisdom. You understand Yisra'ah? You should have a wisdom. Uh, and you teach them out of that. You can see that anytime there's memory and complaining, you draw the spirit of death and hell. Anytime, I don't care who you are, young one, anytime you get anyone, they're murmuring and complaining, get away from them. They will kill you. They will take, I don't give a, I don't care who it is. You run from that individual. Because when Yisra'ah began to murmur and complain, death came, Yisra'ah. Their hearts were open to every kind of sin. People don't understand that that is, uh, it is a form of enchantate, enchant, enchanting unto the powers of hell. Yeah. So anytime you find those in the conclaves uh, um, uh, murmuring and complaining, run from, I don't care who it is. Uh, I don't care if it's this woman or any woman. Get away from them. Run. Save yourself. Yeah. Hallelujah. I don't care who the man is. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Here's an excellent thing for you daughters that we should be taught in, in, in Tehillim, Psalms 34.10. It says that the young lion, Tehillim 34.10, the young lion, Jurush, he likes, so he is in great need, and he suffer hungers, but they that seek or darash, those that practice uh, to study, to understand, uh, those that darash, that investigate, those that truly desire to seek uh, with, a, with an application that is beyond the flesh. Uh, he said, those that seek, yeah, those that seek, oh Maria, yeah shall not withhold any tough thing from them. That's what must be taught to our daughters. And not seeking the world, not seeking the acceptance of the world. Uh, that we that garage, that seek Yah, you teach them to seek Yah. And you show them how to seek Yah in, your, in the beauty of your Shekha. The way you worship Yah, the way you bow, the way you pray, the way, the way you intercede in your conversation. Those that seek Yah, He will not withhold any tough thing from you. When you truly seek Yah, He will not withhold any tough thing uh, from you at all, Yisra'ya. And that must be taught to the bath of Tizayon. Uh, that even in the midst of all of the agony and all of their suffering uh, with her uh, ish, uh, in the midst of all of his trials uh, and complexity of his mind, if she set her heart to seek Yah, she will know that Yah will not withhold uh, any tough thing. Why? Because she has learned from the Zakain uh, of the excellent testimony of Yah's great hand upon their life. But today, many, most not most, uh, the vast majority sit down with the bath and teach folly. And just murmur, complain, and laugh, and foolishness, uh, and frivolity. That's what it's all about. It's not about teaching them. Uh. It's not about teaching them. Uh. They love silliness and foolishness. Uh. They laugh just like, uh, like corn crackling on the pot. You can hear them for miles. That's not yah. It's not yah. That's just the truth. Hallelujah. We don't want fellowship with those that of an excellent ruach. You know, when I was growing up, and, and these men can speak to that, he can speak to this. Uh, even when you went to the gambling house, there were folks that came to the gambling house and didn't even gamble. But they would just come and watch it and, and see who's gambling and see who's winning all the money. And they would see him winning all the money, even though they didn't gamble every now and then, they would place a bet. They would place a bet on him. And in my days, I'm not going to lie, I was, I was a hellacious dice shooter because she was the best of them. And there were numbers that nobody, they didn't like to bet on numbers like uh, six, eight, because there were triple ways of making that. But numbers like four and five, you couldn't make that but two ways. And of course, when you roll that number, I, they were, I, I got it 20, 20, everybody's on that number. And then when you crank it down, you, you brought it out 4-1, and then on the next roll, it's 3-2, uh, because there are only two ways you could make it. And even those that would come just to be in the congregation, just to be in the fellowship, they would just come uh, just to be there. Why is it that Israel don't do that? Why well, don't do what they do? Still come uh, and sit with them. That's how you do it. Uh. You went to the barber shop. Everybody didn't play checkers that went to the barber shop. Uh, and yet you had a checkered board there. And the elders played checkers. Uh, and you watched the elders play. And when they were not there, you would get the scrubs on the on the checkerboards, uh, and that's how you learn. 
Although you did not do it, you still went there because that was the place of congregation. That's the way it should be with Yisrael. The bath of Tizayon, the ancient fellowship all the time. Hallelujah. It is right, my friend. I'm going to teach this quickly. Hallelujah. 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 Can I show you the reward of, of, of Yisrael? Tehillim 84.11. Look at this. He will not withhold no tough thing from us. But this is the reward of teaching the excellent and the tough things. Yah says there's a reward. See, when you teach the bath how to walk before Yah, to Helium 8411, for Yah the sovereign master is a sun and shield. He is the brightness of our day. He is the protector of Yisrael. Yahweh gives Cain, he gives favor. And he gives Gadol, he gives honor. He says no tough thing will he withhold from them that walk coming upright, completely perfected before Yah. That is why even in the midst of a marriage, as the bath has been taught by the Zachin, the elder, even the trials that they endure, even in all of that, she doesn't get discouraged. She continues in the process that Yah commands her, and because she knows that Yah will, will not hold the tough things. But the parents have not taught that today, Yisra'ya, and that's why wives walk out, they do their own thing, they will speak in a kind of way. It's not of Yah. It's not of Yah. The mothers have not taught the daughters the beauty and the excellent pride she is uh, to be caught by a man. Not a boy, but a man. They haven't taught them that. And when she's taught that she is not so egotistically to go out and just say she got a husband uh, to enjoy what she thinks is a simple pleasure of marriage, she's not uh, in that mode. She operates uh, in a different mode because she knows she's a jewel. Uh, she knows she is the prize. Uh, she knows that when a man gets her, he's got something that is full of riches uh, and power and beauty. Uh, because she is high heel, uh, she is strong, uh, she is efficient, uh, she is mighty. Her mind is well ordered, it is represented in the home of a father her father's home is well ordered but that's not the case today you don't find that Yisra'ya. you don't find that she doesn't even understand the beauty of a womanhood she doesn't understand even the transformation of a body because mothers don't teach that it's crazy it's crazy Yisra'ya. they don't even take time and mothers will sit all silly looking like they have done all the things that they should have they have not done that they have not because if they have, we will have jewels of wives for the men to have a wife. Well, there are no, you hear women say there are no good men out there. Well, what do you expect if there is no excellent woman that has been taught the excellence of Yah? How does, she, what would you know about a tough man? How do you know how to pick a tough man? But it's one thing that an excellent woman, even a man in all of his corruption, he knows one that is not like the rest. He knows that. As a boy in high school, we didn't mess with her because she wasn't like the rest of them. But that thing, we all. Her, no, nobody said anything to her. Nobody reproached her. That's a fact. When I was in, when I was in school, uh, and that one that was uh, promiscuous, everybody knew her. But the one that wasn't that way, everybody regarded her. And even those, and, and there will be, we will protect her. Because she was unlike the rest of them. She did not walk. She did not talk. She did not dress. She did not like act like them. For her garments were different than the other girls. You understand? And so the bath have not been taught. So they're lacking. They're dying. They're starving. Because they have not been taught. And they don't know. And they're, they're, they're swimming against a stream. And they don't know how, how to flow. They just don't. And the men are ignorant, they don't un even understand. It is the truth, hallelujah. Yeah. You must teach them tough things. I will show you some tough things. You that have joined us, we'll show you some tough things, hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Here's one here, Tehillim 92.1. You see, if, if, if you a hold, you Ishar don't do that, then how do you think the young ones are going to do it? If one says, I told the Yah from my Ish, it says here in Tehillim, uh, chapter 92, verse 1, uh, it says, It is a tough thing to give yada, not toda, but there's a difference between toda and yada. It is a confession that you know that Yah has done a great thing. Uh, it is a praise that comes from one's lip. So it is an excellent thing for the, for, for, for the mothers to teach uh, the daughters to give toda unto Yah. If you're murmuring and complaining, you can't uh, show her and teach her how to give toda. If you never give toda, she's not going to give toda unto Yah. 
So it is a tough thing. You must teach them the tough things, right? So you teach them how to give yada, that their testimony is one of confession of the greatness of Yah's power and the might of Yah's power. Teach them the tough things of Yah to give yada unto Almighty Yah and to sing praises to his name, O Most High. Teach them. Instead of murmuring and complaining, uh, you sing with them. Uh, you sing melodies from your lap. Didn't they do that in the cotton fields uh, or the tobacco fields? Uh? Yeah. The mothers weren't around gossiping and murmuring about the heat of the day. Uh? Yeah. They were singing in those fields. Uh, they rejoiced. Even though their trials were difficult and harsh, they still rejoiced. They had bread to eat and they rejoiced. And they were singing, and you would hear the harmony and the singing in the field. Although the trials were deeply harsh, they were not complaining. They did not. So you teach them to give yada, how to praise you, how to esteem you, how to praise him with a testimony. That's what you teach them. That's a tough thing, Yisra'ya. You must teach them tough things, the excellent things of Yah. They must be taught that Yisra'ya. Hallelujah. You have to. Hallelujah. When a man finds a wife, he has a gem of Yah. Because she is a beautiful excellence of the, uh, she's an excellent beauty of Yah. Sure she is. She is his expression to man. Did he not express woman from man? And that was his expression to man, a jewel and a gem. She's more than a piece of meat. The world has taught the bath to be nothing but a piece of meat. She's greater than that. Her beauty is beyond some fleshly appeal. It's beyond that, Yisraya. Her beauty is intrinsic. It must be nurtured. She has to be taught. She must be shown. And you that are full of murmuring and complaining, you can't teach nothing. You teach them how to be tama, how to be corrupt and wicked and perverted. But you cannot teach them the tahor of Yah. You cannot teach them the pure things, the chaste things, the excellent things of Yah. And that's your responsibility to begin teaching them tough things. To teach them how to praise the Yada, to give an excellent voice unto Yah. And you cannot do that sitting there on your duff, on your backside, when you're not excited about Yah. When you have no Yara, no testimony of His excellence, His power, what great things He has done for you. If you don't have that, how do you expect them to have that, Yisra'ya? That's an excellent thing. That's a tough thing to teach you, your bath. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. David goes on to say in Helium 54, 6. Psalm 54, 6, a tough thing to teach our bath. That we said, I will freely, or I will need a bath, I will freely. It is a volunteering, it is an offering, a free will offering unto Yah. He says, I will, I will freely zabach to you, Yah. I will praise your name, O oh, Yah, for it is tough. You must teach them the beauty of Yah's name, that they call upon that when they are going through great trials. What they do, they call everyone they know and they talk all day. They get on the cell phone and they talk, 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 talk. Hallelujah. That's all they do. Yeah. These little things offend them. All they want to do is talk, 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 defend. It is wicked. I don't care who you are. In my days, the mother would say, baby, sit down here. Let me tell you something. Let mama talk to you. That's what they would do. I would see that. I saw it too many times. They had a genuine concern. I didn't care whether she was a stranger, not a daughter or not. And they would show more affection to those that were not their daughters. Because they knew that their trials were, were immense. That's what they would do. Come on, a mother-in-law having a high yell daughter. Well, the mother-in-law, the mother should teach the daughter how to be high yell, how to be a strong woman. How to prepare her mind. 
how to exemplify beauty. That's what she should teach them. But yet that is not being taught to the Baptists I own today. And they're faltering, they're fumbling, uh, and they're falling. Uh, they're, they're submerged in such hardship and heartache uh, and pain. And they don't realize giving Yah's name the praise. Uh, it is a tough thing. Uh, it is an excellent thing. Uh, it is the power of their deliverance. Uh, well, mama hasn't done it. Uh, grandmama, my aunties don't do it. Uh, we gather in our conclaves uh, of folly to eat, to drink, uh, and to act like fools. Uh, that's all they do. Whether well, it's the funeral... But there's a family reunion. They don't talk about Yah. Okay, what the gathering is, it's just a bunch of folly. This is a bunch of foolishness. Silly activity. The women full of laughter and full of clownishness. Uh, sporting and acting like fools. Uh, the children are attentive. That's not the way it was in my days. Uh, we would see the women congregating together and the children were disciplined. Uh, there was an order about that. Uh, the young daughters would watch the mothers uh, from a distance. They would watch them. Uh, there was an orderly thing. Uh, I'm not talking about those that knew Yah. And that is the truth. Yet what has happened, Yisrael? Where are we today? It's sad, isn't it? Hallelujah, it is. We should teach the bath to give praise to Yah's name. You should enter in before his presence with Toda Yada in your mouth. And you teach them how to do it. That's what we must do, Yisrael. He says it here in Tehillim 69, 16. You'll write these verses down. There's much more to this, but I'm going to run the course on this tonight. Hallelujah. That's why I wanted one song. And whether you hear or not, there's someone out there that will hear. I received a letter from someone from Florida, and they sent an offering of stamps. And, and it's a beautiful letter. It was an issue. And she said, please, Ray, uh, teach, show me, help me. I need help. So there are those that need help, Yisrael, whether we buy it or not. There are those that will buy this. There are those that will receive it. You will see the fruit of it. And if we don't bear the fruit, we can talk about fruit all we want to. We can talk about the 99 plus 9 will not do. Uh, we must bear the abundance of Yah's fruit. And you must care when you care for a fruit tree. Uh, we're pruning the trees. Uh, we're going to spray them once a week. Uh, we will spray them to kill uh, the bugs and to make sure they're fertilized and, and they will grow luscious fruit. You cannot leave a bath alone uh, to mature in a way uh, when you don't even nourish uh, and nurture her in a way whereby she can be a prize gem uh, unto a man, unto a wise man. It's a shame, Yisrael. It's a sad shame. We got time to sleep, to eat, but no time to engage, uh, to fellowship, to join ourselves. Uh, in the days they will walk to the barbershop, they knew where every gambling house was, uh, and they will go congregate together. The men will congregate, give time for the wives. Uh, nothing like a man sitting around all day doing nothing, uh, and, and, and not even designed to congregate, uh, congregate with Yisrael. Come on. You got a wife, you trust her. She, if you got a virtuous wife, she's high yield. Uh, the scripture says your heart will safely trust in her all the days of your life. She will not do you an evil. So you don't have to watch her. You don't have to watch over. She's not a child. You don't have to watch over to make sure she's doing this and that. Hallelujah. She'll do right. Because she's been taught. She's been nurtured to do right. Hallelujah. Moving on here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To Helium 69, 16. Hear me, O Yah, for your love kindness, your heart is, is tough. Turn me according to the multitudes of your tender mercies. Uh, that is tough to teach the bath, the love kindness of Yah, yes. his heart yes. yeah. How to be tender, so they can be tender with their, their ish and tender with their children, to be tender one with the other. The bath are vicious with each other. That's, I don't care where you go, they're vicious. There's no, there's no love kindness. All the men the same way, no different. I'm dealing with you a whole today, all right? Hallelujah. 
You teach them the love kindness of Yah. You teach them the mercies, the hasid of Yah. That's a tough thing to teach them. So the midst of their great agony is that they understand Yah's love kindness. Don't think you're a wife because you say I'm a wife and I'm married. That doesn't mean you're a wife. It's almost like I watch a particular one how this individual, this, this method, she prepares her husband plate every, he comes in there, he sits, he never prepares. It's, it's a rare thing for him to do that. I like preparing my own. And that's right for her to do that. But he does that. And so if that is beautiful and that is right to do, she should teach. And I'm using that as an example. She can teach from the element of that why. Well, why her love that way? Why not, why not teach all the young bath that? Why not take her and take her and take her and take this one and take them and teach them the beauty and the excellence of that, the, the value and the importance of it? If it's something that is not just done out of the visual, something that is done from the depths of one's delight that you teach it, you don't hold that back. You sell that to the daughters. You take time. You take time. She's willing to do this and the sew and to make my clothing. Uh, then she should teach the young daughters how to do it. Uh, and all the young daughters can sew and do the things for their homes uh, that is vital. And establish the beautiful fashions for their daughters. Uh, we're not doing that, Yisraya. If it's something that is that beautiful and that important, that valuable, you teach. You show them why. This is why. Why you do that all the time? Children are notorious for asking questions. Well, why you do it? Why you do it? Well, explain that thing. You say love, but explain it to me. Come on, Yisraya. We must do that. Hallelujah. We have to, as a nation of people, we have to train our bath. They must be taught. They must exemplify the beauty of Yah. How can you teach a daughter the things of Yah when you're a drunkard? Are you telling her not to be a drunkard? You can't do that. When you're rebellious against Yah, how are you going to teach her to be re not to be rebellious? When you're always murmuring, you're re murmuring to her, your daughter-in-law, your daughter, and everyone's ears you're murmuring. How are you going to teach them not to call upon and cry to the demons of darkness? You can't do that, Yisrael Yah. I watch all things. Believe me, nothing gets... Pass me. I see everything. I observe. I watch. I ponder. I ask questions. And when we have something that excellent, you teach everybody. You teach them. Not just by example. It is a verbal expression. When the bath get together, can I tell you all something? Oh, how precious my ish is. For his lips are sweet as honey. And I love to embrace him. Can I tell you why? I will, my friend. That's what the congregation of the Bethlehem is going to be about. That they share that with a young bath. All they know and been taught is what the world has taught them uh, to lay down, to engage in, in a certain form of activity. And that's love. That's not love. That's not love. She doesn't even know how to reciprocate afterwards because uh, mothers have not taught them the beauty of those uh, activities uh, and the pleasure and the beauty is beyond just uh, a something action, Yisraya. It is a beauty. There's an insanity to it. Uh, sure it is. And she teaches that combat, uh, hear my, my mind, uh, how sweet uh, and how precious, uh, how beautiful, uh, because he's operating in the commands of Yah. He's loving her like Yahshua, how much she love the assembly. It must be done. And when that is done, she works with her hands willingly. She works, she sews, she buys, she's a master, she knows how to operate She's strong. When men see her in the gates, uh, they step back and part ways. Uh, hallelujah. When men see women, they say, girl, you holding something down. She looks a mess. She's not holding nothing down. When a man sees a, 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 a true bath that is precious and beautiful, he will never say that to her. He will never say that. When a man tell you, girl, you show enough thumping, you are nothing to him. When a man sees a woman, he will get quiet. He won't say anything to a precious gem. Because he doesn't want to scar that. But won't say to you, girl, go look at you, girl. You looking foxy there. You are fox too. 
That's what you are. You're a mess. If you think that, that's, that's, that's a beautiful compliment, you're silly. When a man sees something that is of great price and a jewel, he doesn't say anything. When he sees something whereby she's not trying to allure attention and trying to draw attention to, to her, he knows what that is. Every man wants one like that. That's a fact. That's the kind of woman he wants. It's not about the physical beauty. And when a woman has something that is that beautiful, she shares it with all women. That's what she does. Don't sisters do that when they have clothing? When I was growing up, uh, my clothing with my brothers, if they could wear them, they wore them. I said to my natural brother when he was here, I said, you didn't know anything about dressing. I was the one that dressed you. He said, you're right about that. He said, you took care of me right, big brother. No doubt about that. You took care of me. No doubt about it. So that's what they do. They share. They give. And if we are used to it, yeah, we share, we give. You ought to delight for sharing and giving. That's why, that's why you need to teach them the tough things and the excellent things of Yah Yisrael. Yeah. It's by your actions and what you do. That's what it is. Hallelujah. To Helium 73, 28. But it is a tough for me. He says, but it is tough for me to draw near to Yah. Having put my trust in the sovereign Yah, that I may declare all of his works. It is an excellent thing for you to trust in Yah Yisrael. Yah. That you may declare his work. And we must be taught that. The bathroom must be taught that. To trust Yah. To about talk. To make him your refuge. To have confidence in him. In the midst of all of your agony, you still trust Yah. You trust him. You can't, you can't, you can't turn your focus away from that and try to, try to eradicate it out of your mind or, or turn a blind ear from it. You can't do that. You can't do that. And mothers, you can't talk about, and bath the tizayon, you, you, zakin, you can't talk about things that are silly to try to drown out the effects of the things that, that one are suffering. You draw from the excellence of Yah. You take them to the Torah. You open up the book and you teach from that. You teach by example. You teach by word. Your testimony. You must always do that. Something is wrong if you have nothing to say for Yah. Because there's no tough thing in you. From an excellent well, there's a continuous flow. Of the excellence of Yah. You never get tired of talking about him. You never. Individuals, they never get tired of talking about certain things. You got to almost break away from them. Okay, I got to run. And so when you have something that is tough, you want to share with everyone. When someone has an excellent recipe for cake, they want everybody to taste their cake. They're not going to give you the recipe. You think that there's any recipe that anyone has that no one else doesn't know? Oh, you may add the cumin before you add the parsley. You just have to add the parsley before you add the cumin. You got to wait. To, that's all it is. But that's nothing new under the sun. And if you have something that is excellent, you have something that is beautiful, you share it. You sure when you dress up and you feel nice, don't you want others to see how, how you feel and how you look? Come on, don't sit here and say you don't. Come on, Yisraya. You know that. You know that. You fix yourself up. You want others to look at you because you fixed up. When you fix up and you think you feel well, come on, come on. It makes you feel well, doesn't it? Talk to me. You know it's the truth. That's just the truth. So if you've got something that is tough, you want to share that and to give that. Freely give it. Teach the bath. We're lacking on that. Yisrael, the other house is lacking on that. It should be a beautiful occasion to congregate and just... Yada, yada, talk about his name, his excellence, his beauty. That's what it should be about. Hallelujah. 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 David says in Tehillim 1.11.10, I want to talk about these tough things for a while. Hallelujah. He says here, the fear of the Yare of Yah, the Yira of Yah, is the beginning of wisdom. He says, and a tav, a taboon, tav understanding, have all they that do his misvah, and his praises endure forever. So when you teach the bath the tough things, to Helium 111.10, when they have this honor for Yah, the fear, the reverence, the Yira, this terrifying fear, of reverence for Yah, when they truly have that Yisra'ah, yeah, you know that that bath has wisdom. When she guards herself according to the mitzvah of Yah, when the commandments of Yah, she relish, she relish the, the commands of Yah that he has instructed her to walk in. 
You know that that's an excellent thing. She has a beautiful ruach. She has strength. She has character. And the way you do that, or the way she learned that, she must be taught to do that. Children get excited when they learn certain things in life, don't they? So it is we, we are the being, the children of Yah. And if you teach them, they will get excited. If you are excited, they will get excited. There's nothing like an energized, exciting teacher. I love that when I was in school. And when I was in the segregated schools, we had that. Mr. Freeman, Miss Mickles, uh, Mr. Davis, we had teachers uh, that were energized and enthusiastic. Uh, and they taught us. Uh, and we learned much. I did. I learned a lot in school. It was the principles of those foundational building blocks that enables me this day Hallelujah. to be able to carry forth uh, in the things that I'm able to speak to us, Yisra'ya. But they were enthusiastic. They were engaged with us. Uh, they took time uh, and they taught us. Uh, it was a beautiful thing. Uh, and it was the experience of the character that gave uh, validity to what they were saying. It was how they walked before us, how they came in the class, how they looked, how they interacted with us. That gave credence unto what they said, Yisra'ya. So I can teach 10,000 words. And if I'm a hypocrite, it means nothing. You can talk all you want to. You can do all the things you want to. If there's something that is that beautiful, you practice, you do. You want to share that. You have to do that. You want to give that, that that one may experience the same beauty that you are experiencing. We've been taught by the corrupt things that it's all about a sensual expression. And it doesn't mean anything today because many times he doesn't enjoy it, she doesn't enjoy it because there's nothing there for her. It's just an action, a move, and it's just nothing. And that's just the truth. You all know where I'm coming from. I'm not going to, I'm not going to not talk about those kinds of things because they're valuable. It's important. That's why your mothers have missed it. And that's why the daughters did things before it was time because uh, you didn't take time to teach them and to show them uh, to understand the beauty of what they were offering. Their bodies were an offering unto Yah because uh, you're sure they had a man uh, and she was being an offering. Uh, you haven't taught them that. And so they've got this false delusion, this experience about the nature of a matter, and they don't understand the beauty of it. Why? Because you don't understand the beauty of it. If you understood the beauty of it, you would teach them the beauty of it. I don't talk like that around my ach here because I understand his battle and strength. But there are those that I do talk like that, and I express it in a very verbal way. I express it. I express it in detail. And the activity. Sure I do. I'm not ashamed of that. Marriage is on them in the bed is under fire. I'm not a schoolboy. I will, my friend. But because I'm honored for him and my love for him, I will not do that. You understand? Our conversation will be based upon certain things, but it's a very beautiful thing. So the, the Ava, because uh, he has not learned the beauty of love uh, and to understand the beauty of his interaction with his uh, he hasn't taught the son anything. And so when he engaged with the wife, he has a jewel. Uh, when you have a jewel, uh, I, I got a little thing I put my little watches in, uh, and, and I cover them, and I, I got a little claws that I wipe them up. They're not expensive, uh, but I still take care of them. My shoes, all of my shoes are lined appropriately, and I, and I, got, and I keep them shine, and, and I wipe them off, and I got brushes, and I got a hard brush to get the dust off the sole and all of that. I do that all the time. My clothes all lined up, and everything is on hangers. Come on. So the things that should be expressed. When a mother enjoys something that is so beautiful and so wonderful, it is an extension of what she is because uh, it speaks of his expression of love to her, that application. And she wants to tell the bath that is I own. She wants to, it's not a thing to be shameful to talk about. Why should I be shameful to talk about that with him when he has a wife? He has younger than that. I've never produced any children. You got to be able to see that. When a man talks that way, you got to be able to see it. You got to be able to see it in his wife. When a woman talks that way, you got to be able to see it in her husband. You understand? You can talk all you want to. You teach them the tough things. And that, the bed is on the file. It's a tough thing, Israel. It is not something that is moot. You don't talk about it. 
You teach them the tough things. Hallelujah. 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 Wisdom speaks to us, Yisraya, Mishuli, the wisdom of Shalomo, wisdom, Proverbs, Mishuli, 4-2. Yah says, I give unto you tav lecha tav doctrine. This is what wisdom says, forsake you not my Torah. You teach the Baptist the Torah, the Torah of being an Ishaw, the Torah of an Ish, you teach them. You've experienced that, Ima. You teach them the Torah. You teach them the, the responsibilities, the commands of a marriage. And they see that in you. They see that in your enthusiasm. They see that in your love. Love is always enthusiastic. Is Yah enthusiastic about us? That He cares for us and watch over us? Is Yah love? So love is enthusiastic. Not this false human nature that we have. Love is always enthusiastic and cares about that which, uh, which has a place in its bosom. That's what it is. And when one has, uh, when, 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 the, when the Israel loves her husband uh, by her reverence uh, and her faithfulness, obedience unto him, uh, then she wants, to, she wants everyone to know that she wants to talk about that and tell of that. She talks about her ish. She talks about his beauty, his strength. That's what she does. Why? Because she has, been the, she has been the catalyst. And I'll show you that in the scripture. She has been taught the beautiful things. Women always say, well, I can change that man. You know, it is the truth. If he's a man. If they have the essentials of y'all that he commands, uh, she can. If he's a man. It's by her discipline, a higher woman, a woman of strength, is of great value. And, her, and the heart of her husband does safely trust in her. He trusts her decisions. He trusts what she says. He trusts her actions. There's nothing he doesn't trust about her. He trusts her. And even though he is kind of, he is kind of slowful and somewhat not sharp on this because of her faithfulness and because of her actions, her activity, men in the gate speak of her beauty, that it caused him to have a greater sense of what he has. And then he began to appreciate it even in a greater sense because she doesn't rail against him. She doesn't fight against him. She doesn't oppose him. She doesn't do that. She doesn't. Women that don't even know Yah don't even fight against their husband. The men that don't even know Yah and they have a great affinity for their issue. They do. And when you truly, I'll deal with you, man. All right. Let me move on here. Hallelujah. Yah is going to rip the men to hell because we have luck and what Yah commands us to do. He began, Titus began with the men to be chaste. To be tempered. That Shaul, that letter. It begins with the man. You understand? They're not getting by. So if you've got something, my bath, that is beautiful, you want to share that with everyone. When you think you're looking fine as wine, you want everybody to know you're looking fine as wine. When you think you're dressed, you want everybody to know I'm dressed to the tilt. You might as well talk to me. You can sit in all your hypocrisy. And say it's not so, but that is so. When you think you look nice and you feel nice, come on. When someone compliments you, come on, Yisrael, let's, let's be real. I want to show you this is the beauty that Yah should teach, that you, Ishaw, should teach the bath. I want to read it. You know what it says in Tehillim, uh, uh, I'm sorry, in Mishli Proverbs 18.22. Who finds an ish or finds a tough thing. She should be taught how tough she is. Whoever finds a wife finds a tough thing. And he obtained rason of Yah. He obtained the pleasure of Yah. That's what a wife, come on. When a mother went, that's why, that's why a man had to pay a dowry for a precious bath. Because she was so valuable. She was so beautiful. That's the beauty of a wife. She's a tough thing. So the man finds that her beauty was so beauty, it was so excellent. Her wisdom, her strength. Her arm was a strong arm. She had a might. It was so beautiful. 
And when a man found a wife, he found a tough thing, uh, and he had rason. He had the same delight in her as Yod did, because Yod knew, knew that she was a gem. He knew that why? Because uh, they had been amp time uh, taken with her to teach her, to show, instruct, to, to bring her uh, to that place uh, whereby she, she, she would be a valuable tool. She would be a valuable access to any man. She will go into a marriage with great strength and great beauty. She hasn't been taught. She doesn't know. She doesn't know what to expect. She doesn't understand. And so when things began to go kind of uh, a different fashion, she doesn't know how to respond. She hasn't been taught to praise. Yeah, because mama didn't praise. Grandmama, grand, great, great. And she hasn't seen that among the arts, among those uh, that are the zucking. She hasn't seen that. Oh, she's heard his murmuring and complaining and folly and gesturing and jiving and, and shug buck. And she hasn't heard things of a great meaning, just a bunch of folly. She's watched the very cunning devices and the, and the subtleties of wickedness among those that she regard highly. And so she does things and she contemplates things because they're showing her these things are right to do and they're wrong to do. So she doesn't know. So how does she understand? How does a 20-year-old young lady understand, a bad, understand the beauty of a, a, of a wife? How does a 22-year-old woman that never experienced any kind of what we call the worldly sensation, how does she understand? How does she understand the activity, what she's about to be engaged into uh, when, when, when he began to, to take uh, his pleasure in her? She doesn't understand that. Because mama has had her, her, her times uh, of the activity because of her damn anger, her stupidity, her wickedness. Uh, and she, is, she has formed this, uh, this attitude uh, so she can't teach her a thing. She doesn't know how to teach her how, how, uh, that, that her beauty will shine uh, from the excellence of her bosom. Uh, when he sees her, he embraces her, he enjoys her breasts. Uh, that's her beauty. Yeah. She hasn't taught her that. She doesn't know. And so when things doesn't uh, come out the way she perceives uh, by, the, by, by these thoughts and concepts that are based upon her immaturity of her mind, she, then everything began to become de delusional because they haven't taught her. It's amazing that mothers and the Zakim, whether they are the Ish or the Ishaw, can spend hours doing nothing and we have no time to teach and to instruct. Something is wrong. Yes, there are young. Hallelujah. Back to Titus. Titus. It says in the book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 4, he said, you must teach them to be sana, to be humble and, and kind and sweet. He said that they may teach the young women to be sana, sana, to be humble, to be precious, to be sweet, to love their husbands, and to have their children. To love their husband. And to love their children. Let me read something on the uh, goal of father here. The next verse. Because I want to deal with these tremendous attributes here. That she must be discreet. She must be being. Be now. She must have the ability to discern. She must have the spiritual intellect that has been taught and passed down. How many of you all, some of you all that are young, you don't remember. You may have watched it. I remember the story of Roots by Alex Haley. Okay. You must understand, even in this nation here, that during slavery, the only records of the people of the diaspora, it was an oral type of handing down. It was not written because they didn't have records of birth. and all. They really did not. And so it was an oral translation of them as they would speak it in the next generation and everybody and they would remember it precisely and so when he went to Alex Haley with the African and that name Koto Kente when, he, when they began to talk the, the genetics uh, of that line it was always it was orally recorded in the mind and it was passed from one generation to the other and they all knew it and they spoke it succinctly the way it was passed down to them you understand that's what mothers do. They pass down things. They may pass down, oh, dresser, their dresser's been in the family for 100 years. 
That thing's been in famine for hundreds of years. You understand? Land and houses where they still live on the homestead. And so when a mother has something that is beautiful, she pass it down. She passes it down to daughter, for daughter to pass it down to daughter, daughter to pass it down to daughter. She pass it down to daughter, daughter to pass it down to daughters, and daughters to pass it down to daughters. And, uh, and, and it began to grow with a, a, with a tremendous strength in their bosom. So when mothers do not, what mothers tend to do with the Ema, they pass on folly and, and trivial and, and foolish things and sinful things. So the, the Ach as well, understand. I'm, not, I'm saying this to, to strengthen the bosom of Yisra'ya, Abath, and to strengthen the Zachin that they may understand that Yah has given you something that is of a gem for you to train and to teach and to bring that up in the fear of Almighty Yah, to teach them how to be modest, to teach them how to be humble, to teach them how to be forbearing, uh, to teach them how to be lowly. There's nothing like when a woman raises her voice uh, and she began to spew her venom. There's nothing like that. I will show you what it does. It does more destruction than anything. And this is not belittling my uh, whole I, uh, The daughters of the Bath of Tizan are beautiful. And the enemy has corrupted everything because he knows that they are precious and and their prized jewels in the sight of Yah when they operate according to his, ruach, to, to his writings. Hallelujah. He says, not only that, but to teach them to be discreet, to teach them to have wisdom and understanding, uh, and to be chaste, keepers of home, tav, obedient to their own husband, that the word of Yah may not be blasphemed. I want to deal with each one of those little aspects for a moment. I want to deal with that one that we call the street. All right? Uh, the book of Shemuel, 1 Samuel. Look at this quickly. I want to show you very discreet. A woman uh, of great intelligence. She was attentive. Uh, she was wise. She was a strong woman. She had the strength of Yah. Hallelujah. It says in 1 Samuel 25, uh, Shemuel 25 verse 3. Uh, and this was the encounter when Dawid had with Nabal. Uh, who in the midst of his need, in the midst of his warriors uh, uh, of food. And this fool would not even entertain them or even give them food to eat. But look at this. It says here in 1 Samuel 25, 3. Now the name of the man was Nabal. He was a fool. That's his name. And the name of his wife was Abigail. When you have that name, Abigail, it means that your Abba is your joy. That's what Abigail is. So you rejoice in Yah, your Abba is your joy. He is your strength, he is your joy. And her, his wife's name was Abigail. And now, and she was a woman, see, see what it says, she was a woman of tough understanding. How did she have that? Her mother taught her that. Because her mother taught her that, her mother, mother taught her that. She was a woman of tough understanding. She was a woman that, that was chaste, Yisraya. She was a discreet woman. She was discreet. She had the ability to discern and understand. And the scripture says she was a Yafef. She was a beautiful woman. She was beautiful. Abigail is beautiful. She's a beautiful woman. She has a beautiful aura of Yah that flows from her, Yisraya. Her walk, her talk, her actions, her deeds. She was a beautiful woman. She had a beautiful countenance. It says, but her husband, he was chashev. He was churl. He was hard. He was wicked. He was mean. He was corrupt. He was a fool of a man. He was obstinate. He said, and he was churl and, and evil in his doing. And he was of the house of Caleb. Although she had a man that was cruel and crazy and wicked, she was a beautiful woman. And she was wise. And she knew that Dawi was the messenger of Yah. She knew that Yah was to run all things in his hand. And she said, load up the asses uh, and take that man some, some raisins, some bread. That's what, she, that's what a wise woman does. She teaches in her actions. Uh, her ways are strong. Uh, she's beautiful. Uh, Yah is the joy. And so she passed uh, those gems down. She doesn't hold that. Secretive and die with that. Anything y'all teach me, I want everyone to know it. Anything I hear the uh, teach it, and I can reverberate that. I want to teach it so everybody can know. You don't hold back a gem. A woman doesn't buy a diamond ring and put it in the box. She wears it. That's what a discreet woman is. She's a, she's a woman of taboon. She has excellent wisdom and understanding of the things of Yah. Hallelujah. Not only should she be that, but she should be chaste. She should be ma. Her mind pure. Her actions. Her attitude. Her, her desire. That's what chaste is. To be pure. To be cleaned. 
to have the reverence of Yah. Dawid says in Tehillim 19 verse 8. Listen to this. The statues of Yah, they are your shah, they are upright. Rejoicing the lev, the commandments of Yah is pure, enlightening the eyes. You must teach them the mitzvah, the instructions of Yah. They cannot be chased without instructions of the mitzvah, the commandments of Yah. You can sit down and talk about all the social activities uh, and the social events all you want to, uh, but you must teach them to be chaste. Uh, you must teach them to be bar, to be excited about Yah, to have a purity of their mind. You cannot pour that garbage in their mind. You're going to pay if you do, my Ema. You're going to pay, Zakin. You're going to pay if you pour that in them. They're innocent. They don't understand things in a way you do. And you're going to pay if you pour that garbage in them. You're going to pay big time. And that's a fact. Hallelujah. You're going to pay for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not only that, but they must be keepers of their home or keepers at home. And it sure must do that. Y'all never intend for a bath to be out working and trying to make a living. That's the strength of the man. I don't care if you don't have a one pair of shoes, you berach yah for that. Having food, if the man supply food and raiment, you got shelt over your head, you told her, Almighty Yah. You don't feed off the frenzies of your lust and your greed and your imagination to have food, to have a change of raiment. There would you be content and you learn how to be a keeper or shema to guard. Shema is to guard your home like thorns, like a like a, a hedge of thorns. You guard the laws of your home. You guard the instructions of your home, Yisraya. That's what you should be doing. Not running from house to house in everybody's affairs and everyone's business. You guard your home to be keepers of the home. Shirak says the wise teaching of Shirak 26 verse 13 through 18. Hear the word of Yah, Yisrael. It says this. Uh, it says, a wife's virtue delights her husband. It is your purity that makes your husband delight. It is your faithful obedience to the Torah, to the word of Yah, that makes your husband delight. And it says, and her destruction, uh, her destruction and skill, uh, it put hazak, uh, it put fatness on the man. When a woman speaks with beauty uh, for the excellence of her strength, it makes her husband fat. The world will say he gets proud, but it makes him hazak. Make him strong and fat. It put strength in the man. You hear that? But the world has commanded you've been taught by mama because that's what she does. Uh, she talks back. She runs her mouth. Uh, she mistreats. She dishonors uh, the man. Uh, so you've been taught to do that. Uh, and there's no fatness on the man. So when there are battles uh, and trials, uh, he runs off and leaves family at all. Because he has no hasaka. Uh, he has no strength on his bones. Uh, but it's the virtue. Y'all has given you something, Bath of Tizayon, uh, to put strength on a man's back. Uh, to make him strong. Strong to make him vibrant, to make him a mighty warrior. That's what he has given you. He's given you something greater than anything, Yisrael. It says that her destruction is skill put fat on his bones. It says a silent wife is a gift from Yah, a woman that knows how to speak in the presence of Yah. She's a gift from Yah. And there is nothing so Precious. There's nothing so precious. There's nothing so precious as a disciplined nephesh in a, in a wife. Jewels and riches are not as precious as that. There's nothing more precious. And the world has taught you to be, to arouse your scepter in your mouth, to talk, but there's nothing more precious than a disciplined nephesh of a wife. There's nothing. There's nothing. There's nothing. A quiet wife that doesn't cause disturbance. Her, her ruach is quiet. Her mind is quiet. She is a gift. She is a jewel from Yah. And the world has taught the path of Tizayon that your vociferous nature shows that you're a woman. You're not a woman. She's a gift from Yah. 
That's what the book says. She's a gift from Yah, and her precious Ruach is nothing like it. It tells us, then he, should not the, the elderly women teach their daughters to be modest? Yeah. It says a modest shame face, a modest shame face and faithful wives uh, as virtue to virtue. She gets stronger and stronger. Her beauty, her yafef is more beautiful. She accentuates beauty. She, virtue is a strength. It is a beautiful strength of character. She adds virtue to virtue and her, her, her continent. <clears throat> her contented mind and her chaste nephesh cannot be valuable. You hear that man who cannot love something like that. There's a value that is so great. Uh, there's nothing it cannot, Yah says it cannot be valued. All the riches of all the diamonds of the gold my diamond mines of Africa. You can't value that. But you see that and how the world make that so so unattractive. And the, and the Ema, the Zakane, don't even know the beauty of that. Make something that is that valuable by teaching them how to be chaste and beautiful. There's no price you can put on that. When a man has that, come on, it adds strength to a man. It makes them strong. It adds hazak to a man. It adds life to a man. I'm telling you, there's nothing that adds life to a man like a wife. She's a gem, she's a jewel, and the world takes that from you. This is not to belittle you, it's to show you what strength and what Yah has invested in you. Yeah. You're something that's so beautiful you don't even understand, and the world wants to try you and make you look like a Jezebel. You teach the daughters to be modest and their dress and shame facing. You don't want men looking at you, you don't want another man looking at you, you don't look at another man. He was your access to the young man. He said, when you see a shapely woman, uh, flee from it. Run. Turn your head quickly. Don't look at her. We're crazy. Her beauty is like this, like the sun rising in the height of Yah. That's what, I, come on, man. What? Come on, Yisrael Yah. What, what's more beautiful than the sun rising? Ain't nothing like that thing. There is nothing like that. And that's what a wife is. As the sun rises in Yah, that's what she is. And mothers, you have the responsibility to shape them that way, to teach them. You stop your damn murmuring. He was a no good man. Then hell, what kind of a woman were you? Did you fit these qualifications? She has fatness to a man. There are men that are alive today because they had an excellent wives. They will die. And she put strength in him. I'm telling you, she put strength in him. She made him alive. The men that David did dead today because uh, they had an evil wife. Now the man doesn't add life to the wife, uh, but the wife adds life to the man. When she missed the, meets the qualifications of Yah. There's nothing like that. She's a precious, beautiful thing. Hallelujah. The things that she ought to work on, uh, she, don't, she doesn't. And the things that she, she's working on, she should not be working on. Moving ahead quickly. Hallelujah. Like the sun rising in the height of Yah, so is, the beauty, so is the beauty of a tough wife. You teach them tough things. When you teach them tough things, you produce a tough wife. When you teach them the excellence of Yah, you produce a tough wife. So as a tough wife in her well-ordered home, he commanded the wives to be keepers at home. And when you go into a wife's house, a house is ordered, it's clean. It's clean. It's ordered. Everything is ordered. I'm not talking about straightening up. It's clean. To be keepers of their home. To keep, to guard their homes. There's nothing like a wife having a well-ordered home. There's nothing that makes a man angry. If he's worked all day, the wife, it would me. When I would come home, my house would always be spotless. Because she was at home. It would be immaculate. My meals would be cooked. My house was immaculate. It was clean. No, not straightened up. It was clean. Everything was well ordered. My food was laid out. It was ready. There's nothing like coming home. Say, what have you been doing all day, woman? And then I make excuses. I will not make excuses for her. 
There's nothing she must be taught to have a well-ordered home. When the man comes home, he can lay down. He can eat if he wants, he can lay down. Don't teach him that today. Homes are not well-ordered. She must have a well-ordered home. There's nothing like a well-ordered home, daughter. And listen, you all put that in your hand. He puts that to the mothers to teach you that. You teach them how to balance their time. Listen, if you've got mothers that don't even balance their time, when one is temperate, the word temperate means simply this, to be temperate, there's balance. There's balance. You don't get over extreme this way, over extreme that. You keep a balance. That doesn't mean you're not, you don't get angry. That doesn't mean that you may not go this way or that way. But there's temperate, there's balance. There's always a balance there. Even though when you go this way, you know how to, you know how to get right back there. You understand? And so you teach them the balance or the temperance, uh, well balanced. Uh, when a house is well balanced, she knows that she gets up. But this time she takes care of this. Oh, it ain't going to take me 20 minutes. Okay, I got that clean. All right, the babies will be here. They're going to mess up a little bit, but I got that clean. I got that ready for him. Well ordered, not just a clean house, but a well ordered. A well ordered. You go, you, you, you go to the Conrad Hilton, it is not like a Hilton. The Conrad is with the old man. That, 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 that is Hilton. You go to certain hotels, you go to certain houses, you go to certain communities, not like other communities. There are communities that are ordered, and there are communities that are well ordered. Not a blade of grass, talk to me. Everything is edged properly. There are communities that are well ordered. There are communities that are ordered and orderly, but there are communities that are well ordered. And she must, there's nothing like a well ordered home because it's a discipline in nefesh. And what the Ema, the mothers, the elderly have done today is corrupted uh, and, and did great detriment to the bath of Tizayon. And when they do that, they cause them to prostitute themselves, to sell themselves for frivolous, lustful, little wicked things. Uh, they sell out for nothing. And when a mother balances her hour uh, with her time, she teaches the others how to balance their time. Uh, if she wants to lay down, if the husband goes out to work and all she's going to do is lay and sleep, something is wrong. I guess about the last minute try to cook something for him. No, when the youngers come home, the house is balanced. The house is immaculately clean. Everything, I don't care what you have. You can be dirt poor. It can be immaculately clean. You raise the windows. You go out and pick some pine needles and put them on the stove and boil them and make the house smell well. You can't do that. The yard well ordered, everything well ordered. You think you're white because you lay on your back? That's not a wife. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm not belittling you, my daughters of Tizayon. Now, this is what she's like. Shorak 2617. I'm going to close in a minute. She says, like the shining lamp of the Kodash candlestick. That lamp represents the seven Ruachim of Yah. That's what she represents. She represents the seven powerful Ruachim, the spirits of Yah. She has the fear of Yah. She has been, she has wisdom. She has the Huchma of Yah. She has the Ruach HaKodesh. She has the counsel of Yah. She has the might of Yah. That's what her beauty represents. That's what she represents. He doesn't say that about the man. But she is like that. She is like, like the Kodesh candlesticks. So is the beauty. Of the face in a ripen age when she gets older, she doesn't sit on mommy fine looking like a, a damn cantankerous thing. Her beauty is ripe, it shines like the Rahim of God. When she starts to get older, she has such wisdom, it shines from her. The beauty of her wisdom shines. Even the young daughters learn from her expression. Her countenance is beautiful. And look what we sell out to yesterday. You will never learn anything because we talk too much. That's what she is like. Nothing so beautiful. When she starts getting old, it says in her ripe age, her countenance shines like the seven Ruachim. The seven Ruachim, the seven spirits of Yah. You can look at us, we got spirits, but it's not a shining spirit. That's right. We can pretend all we want to. And we can put on a little facial expression of a front. It doesn't mean nothing. Hallelujah. 
It says, like pillars of gold of the base of silver, so are beautiful feet with steadfast love. Her feet are not swift to run to sin. She's been taught. The elders have taught us, baby, sit down. Let me teach you. She's steadfast, unmovable. And her mind is always abounding in the Torah of Yah. Her feet are steadfast. She's not swift to run to folly and to play out juvenile activities. Her countenance expresses wisdom and she teaches the young ones by her countenance. And nothing like, nothing like a cantankerous old man and a mean woman when they start getting old. There's nothing like that. And nasty. And look at who you are. There are two pillars whereby the Torah of Yah hinges upon. To love Yah with all, to love your neighbor as yourself. Look what Yah says about this. As the golden pillars upon the socket of silver, so are the fair feet with a constant lamb. When their heart is constant in the Torah, that's their beauty. You see, this is what the enemy robs the women of. And because it robs the bath of this, they don't know how to teach no one else. And they get cantankerous. They have no testimony of Yah because their love is not constant. It is not steadfast. You don't hear them talking about Yah. You don't hear them getting excited about Yah. You don't hear them rejoicing in the beauty of Yah. That's why when the bath get together, it should be a time of rejoicing. Not superficial, but rejoicing. The testimonies should flow. Everyone should want to say something of the excellence of Yah. I like the way Shirak talks here. Hallelujah. He tells us to be obedient unto your own husband. Quickly here, I want to move. I have a few more scriptures and I want to close. Mishli, Proverbs 19.13. Mishli, Proverbs 19.13-14. It says, this is why you, you, you must be obedient to your husband. It says, a, a kessel or a foolish son is the calamity of his father. father. Of his avat. That's what a foolish son is. Of the calamity, the folly, the frivolity of his father. And a contentious, and the contentions of a wife are a continuous dropping. It is the mityam, or the brawling, the strife of a wife. Ain't nothing like that. It's like a continuous dropping. Like water just constantly trip, 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 trip. It's annoying. It's agonizing on a man's mind. It's agonizing. The women that annoy their husband about something simple. Let's do this. Let's do that. Just all the time. She's never contented. It says, house and riches are the inheritance of a father. And a prudent wife, she is from Yah. When you find a wise wife, a sochal, she is from Yah. When a man finds that, she's from Yah. Because mother has taken time. Mother-in-law has taken time. And those that are in the entourage of Yah's house, they have taken time to teach her, to work with her. It's sad that if you love someone, you don't teach them. I don't care what your situations may have been. You still teach them the beauty of what the Torah teach. And then as you study the Torah, you see where you miss the mark yourself. You understand? Yeah. Hallelujah. I want to give us some of these beautiful ingredients of a wife and I'm going to close. Hallelujah. Quickly, I'm going to move. You write this down. You go back. One day I'll take my time and each one of these precepts and concepts, I'll take my time to, to deal with them. The book of Shirak, chapter 7, verse 19. He commands the man, man, do not deprive yourself of a wise and tough wife. See, a wise wife and a tough wife come from Yah. Shirak 7, 19. He says, for her charm is worth more than gold. Do you hear that? A wise and a tough wife. That her charm is, is worth more than gold. There's nothing like that. Her charm, her beauty. It's not her external, her charm, her smile, her, her well-balanced, her chasteness, her, 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 the way she's been taught. He did not say, come on, her price is, uh, her price is worth more than gold. It says in these days that a man will be more precious than gold, but it says that this, a wife of this nation, her price is worth more than gold. He goes on to give us more descriptive uh, understanding of a wife. 25, Shirak 25, 25. Uh, it says, give water no passage, 
had no boldness of speech to an evil wife. You don't let an evil wife just run her mouth and talk any way she wants to. That's an evil wife. You don't do that. You don't let her do that. A quiet wife is a blessing from Yah. But an evil wife, she would run her mouth, she would say anything, she would do what she wants to. She wants to. She would do it any way she wants to, Yisrael, but it's not Yah. It says in Sirach 26, 17, an evil wife is an ox yoke, which chaps. Taking hold of her is like grasping a scorpion. When you find one that is evil, to try to lay hold or talk to someone like that, it is like dealing with a poisonous scorpion. She bites and she kills. She stings. But her tough wife is a blessing from Yah. There's a demarcation between them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says this in Shirak 26 verse 2. I want to clear that and I want to close with these beautiful accolades to the beautiful bath of Tezayon. Hallelujah. It says in Shirak 26 verse 2, it says a virtuous, loyal wife rejoices her husband and he will complete his years in Shalom. That's what she grants to him. Life in Shalom and strength and beauty. That's what she blesses him with. He will complete his years in Shalom Yisrael when he has one like that. Well, how is she developed? She must be taught. She must be taught. You find elderly women want to compete with a young one thinking that uh, they're young, but they're not young. You're old. I am getting older. And I can't compete with my young bloods around here. I know that. I don't try to. I don't try to do what they do. We all on that board on Yom Rishon. I said to them, I said to Yusipi and Shimri Yawasadak last Yom Rishon. I said, listen, I was over here the other day with Zachim Benamin. And you're safe. So my back is not at its strength. I'll make sure you have plenty of wood, man. And when they get heavy, those logs weigh two, three hundred pounds. You understand? Well, that was a time I would, I would load them up myself. I said, now we do the, it together. You understand? See, that's what an excellent wife does. She adds strength. And fatness, hasak, to a husband. A virtuous, loyal wife rejoices. She makes the husband glad. And he will complete his years in great shalom. And the third verse, it says, a tough wife is not just a blessing. But it says, she's a great blessing. A tough wife. You teach her tough things. She become a tough wife. She is a great blessing. And she is granted among the blessing of a man who fears Yah. If a man fears Yah, he gives him a tough wife. That's what he does. She's a great blessing. See, the world's not going to tell you that. She's a great blessing. She's a better chaya. She's the essence of Yah's riches upon a man. And Yah says, I will only grant that unto one that fears me. A man that loves me, that reverence me. I'm not going to get that to any man. That's why our bath must be taught. We must take time. We must train them and teach them and show them. They have great value. Their beauty is beyond this simple carnal beauty of what we call carnal beauty. You can't attract a man that way. You've got to have something greater than that. You got to have something greater than that. And that's a fact. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's just a fact. Shirak 36 23. I close with this. Hallelujah. It says, If kindness, meekness, and humility in her tongue, wisdom speaking here, the wife in her tongue, then her husband is not like other men. You hear that? If there's an issue that she has this in her tongue, she's been taught to be meek, to be modest, to be kind, 
and to show humility, if that's from her lotion, then her husband, you see what she grants to a man? Her husband is not like other men. He doesn't walk like other men. He doesn't look like other men. He doesn't talk like other men. He doesn't even function like other men, if that's in her. You can tell a lot about a man with his it show, what it show he got. You understand? This is what Yah says. It says, uh, he who acquires a wife gets his best possession. And a wife is trained to be a wife. She's taught. She's nurtured to be that way. A mother that loves will teach her daughter to be a wife. She will train her and show her the beauty. She will work with her because she's a great possession. That's why the man didn't mind paying a dowry for her. I believe it should be that way still today. Not believe it should be. When a man gets an excellent one, he pays a dowry for her. He gets his best possession. A helper, sakor, fit for him, and a pillar of support. When he's weak, she supports. She's a pillar. When he can't even bear himself up, there's nothing that heals a man like an excellent wife. When he's in his bed of derision, just the beauty of her countenance caused strength to flow into him. Where there is no fence, where there is no shema, no keeper, the property will be plundered. And where there is no wife, a man will wander and he will sigh, just like a horse. Where there's not a wife, he will wander. He will go away with, oh, man, I'm sick of that. So you baptize are on you. You are, uh, you ima, you zachain, you must teach. I don't care, the young, or they must be taught. Because there's no possession, and there's nothing more valuable than a precious Isha. She's a gem from Yah. And Yah grants it unto you wisdom and knowledge to teach them and to show them. You must show them. You must. Daughter-in-law, you go to her house. I don't care what she says. Make sure it's right. Make sure it's clean. Make sure it's well ordered. If your house is not well ordered, then you can't teach her how to keep her house well ordered. Well, you don't know her. No, I know you because Yah commands you to do that. He commands you. I will, my friend. He commands you to do that. This is what you should do. And your testimony of your strength and your beauty, it should resonate out of you. And then she will know you have strength and the ability to show her and to teach her. And in all of her ignorance, she will begin to learn. But that's what you do. Don't do it. You got a responsibility. It's up to you whether you buy it or not. There's a, there's a time of reckoning and there's a time that we must give an account for all the things that he has commanded us to do in this fleshly body. We're going to have to give an account for that, Yisrael. You're going to give an account for everything that has been done in your flesh. And you're going to have to give an account. Period. I don't care who you are. You must give an account. And if you do not teach them, woe unto you. We have the accident of sitting back and saying, he this and she that and they that, and yet you're not teaching them. It's wrong. You must teach them. Has Yah taught us that Yah should come to teach his disciplined ones? You must teach them too. You other ones must utilize the taboon. You must utilize that wisdom that is so profound. It is, it is personified in you. That your walk is different, your talk is different, your look is different, Yisra'ya. That we may among Yisra'ya produce the very precious gems of wise for the men to have a wife to add strength to his navel that he will be fat. And he's ready to fight the battle for Yah. He's a warrior. He's a warrior. That's what he shall be. And that's what we need in this, our warriors. And to have that, you must have excellent wives. A young 20-year-old daughter, unless she has been taught the disciplines of a beautiful wife, she doesn't know what it is. 25, they don't know what it is. And that's a fact. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They must be taught. They must be worked with constantly, every day, all the time. Hallelujah. And then when you begin to do it, develop a, a trust, a confidence. And they can tell you. And then you can give them the right musa, the counsel, the discipline. The correction for the matter. Hallelujah. May the riches of Yah rest upon you all that intend to go that long. May Yah bless you all. May He strengthen you that have joined us. May He cause your heart 
to delight your wives, strive to be wives. And husband, I got your number, right? We'll work you next time. Don't worry about it. We got you. May Yah bless you all. Yisrael, Yah may strengthen us in the knowledge of Yahshua. Hamashiach, may we hold fast to all that he instruct us in because you are his children. He loves you enough to show you and to teach us. We need teachers. We need men to teach us and, and the women and the bath of Tizion to teach. We need that. It's sad. We teach. We need that. We need that. The mothers of old would teach. They would teach how to cook. They would teach how to clean. They would teach how to take care of the babies. And they would say, girl, you bring, bring that young in here. I would see it. The girl, you got to work with this youngin. He's too big to be doing this on his diapers. Keep you keep keep a user busy all day. And they would take heed and they will and they will work and train and party train. I said, I'm not gonna stop, Sensei. The world has made us lazy, giving you pampers and you don't give a damn. You don't give a damn. Mothers had to, they had a they, they had a skill innate. They knew when the young and had pissed at night and they were up to dry their little bodies in them cold shacks. They couldn't let that piss stay on that little baby all night. So the world say, let it piss four or five times. Don't even worry. You just sleep, get your sleep. You haven't done anything all day, but slept anyway. But just sleep all night, eat and sleep. That's all you need to do. That was not y'all. And then they're sodding the landfills with all of these things that are not even disposable, just filth, filth. Greedy pigs. That's all it is. It didn't take you long in my days to learn how to piss. You believe me. And you didn't piss the bed either. You didn't piss in bed. You got by this time. But the next time, you, you learn. That's what you do. And you teach them. You teach them how to raise their children and how to discipline their children. That's what, that's what a mother does. Are we the children of y'all? Is he, come on, does he discipline us? Yeah. All right then. That's what you do. Your mothers teach them. May you brought you all. Let's stand to our feet. We greet you all. Oh, Maria, we brought you for all things in Yeshua's name. Go with us, guide us, teach us. Brach Yisraya, your bath, they're precious. You grant unto man something that is of a great gem, that's greater than a gem, yeah. A precious is shall bless them and keep them. Teach our little ones, our young ones. Teach us all, yeah, for we need that. And the blessed assurance of the name of Yahshua HaMashiach. Keep us all as we go home. Give us rest and sleep this night. Yeah. Grant unto Yisraya your shalom. We ask it all in Yahshua's mighty name. Hallelujah. 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 Yabrak Yisraya.